We are David and Sherry Og. We have been here in Papua New Guinea since 1991. So as of today, that makes 32 years. I grew up on the mission field in Columbia, South America. And when I was about 15 years old, I heard some audio cassette testimonies from the Bisorio people here in Papua New Guinea. I heard about many more uh, language groups in Papua New Guinea who were writing letters begging for missionaries and there just weren't enough people able to go and my heart was just really impressed by the Lord to head in this direction. I first became interested in Papua New Guinea when a missionary came through my church and was introducing an opportunity to serve on a short-term mission team to Papua New Guinea. I was so excited. I thought this is something that was worth giving my life for and I wanted to be a part of it in any way God could use me. Hello. Well, I sure miss that warm California air. <laughs> It's starting to get pretty cold around here. It's not staying very warm. We first heard about the Simbari tribe when we were in missionary training in Canada. And a missionary came through and told us about this place that he had visited. He had come through on a helicopter, landed in a really remote location, and there was a family working in there who had lost coworkers and they desperately needed reinforcements. We thought, well, maybe this is a place that God might use us in. So we spent about a week with this family, getting to know them. We met the people decided to join this team. It wasn't long and we were back on the trail bringing our stuff and our family to be able to set up camp in the Simbari tribe. The reason for us living in the village in the first place is an answer to the call of Christ to go and make disciples of all nations. Our goal was to bring God's word into the language, to begin to teach that message to the people in a way that would allow the Holy Spirit to birth a church.
the early days of ministry, we found ourselves to be learners. And it's very humbling to come to a place where you don't know the language or the culture. You feel kind of like a little lost child walking around. You don't understand what's going on. Really, the best way to get through that is to humble yourself and realize, okay, I really need these people's help. You need to lean on them. You need to spend time with them. And you have to start by building a house in the tribe and getting ourselves established. But in the midst of that, we immediately start learning phrases, memorizing little things that get us speaking and relating to the people because it was really about starting to build relationships from the beginning. And there was no clinic, no way for the people to get medicine up here. So part of my ministry right from the start was helping to treat people who were sick and learning the words for asking them medical questions. And that really helped give me a jump start with the language. And also just to be able to help them in tangible ways just gave such a joy that I was able to be the hands and feet of Christ even before I could really speak their language well. Just doing life with people, doing life as you follow Christ, you're wanting to model what obeying Christ looks like and talk about the struggles and the joys that you've gone through, but you also do the same with them. And when you share that together, it, it strengthens us and them. Several years ago, some ladies came to my house and we were sitting on the front porch together. And I asked them, I said, so now that we finished the book of Ephesians, what truths have impacted your life? And both of them were just glowing as they shared with me how before, they wouldn't get a lot of help from their husbands with the gardening or the children. But after learning about husband-wife relationships, the husbands started running down to the gardens to help their wives and carry the heavy loads and not just making their wives carry them. And just the, the wives were just beaming as they shared how God's word had impacted their marriages. It was interesting because during the years we were studying language, we met all these people and we would sit down and visit with them. And some of them would tell us, hey, we're gonna come. When you start teaching the Bible, we're gonna come. But a lot of those people didn't come and God himself raised up his own group of people. We met Raymond, he was so faithful. He would be saying such close attention and was just tracking so well. And he trusted in Christ. After that, we saw that he was really gifted and we started leaning on him for some help with our lesson work and translation and eventually turned into my main translation helper. Now, Raymond and other men from the church are our coworkers in this work. And we're so excited that it's not just us, but we work together with a team of Simbari people to see the church grow and spread here in this place. This is a draft of Acts that I've done up. He's studying this, and then what he's going to do is he's going to say it in his own words, uh, and we're going to record it here on the computer. And we use that to help improve the discourse quality of the translation. As we started studying through the book of Acts, you know, and they saw, hey, these people, they were sharing everything. They were taking the message to these other uh, towns and villages. So they just immediately said, we need to do that. Jesus said to go, let's go. And so they would put their bag on their shoulder and they were ready to go right now. And when God says to go, okay, where, let's go. <laughs> it's interesting when you get to that place in your ministry where the people you have taught actually begin to teach you. And again, it was humbling that the Simbaris were so quick to respond to God and they were teaching me during the, that time. But what an amazing opportunity as we woke up each morning as a team of us would pray for this new village and then we would share the teaching responsibility. And as we hiked on the trails back and forth, we were talking about what God was doing and, and talking about the Lord and what we were learning from the teaching ourselves and how God was teaching our hearts. And just sharing that kind of interaction and discipleship time with the guys was just, it was just amazing. It's a big stretch that first time you teach and you're completely out of your comfort zone. You don't feel like you're ready for it. But God still, you know, that's the, the word is living and yeah. it's, his spirit uses that even in our weakness. It's like people who sometimes share their faith, you know, like witnessing, sometimes they don't do it very eloquently, but God still uses yeah. it. Yeah. It's, it's because it's not just an earthly message, it's full of, you know, the spirit mm -hmm. and life to it. That's all. Thank you, Jesus. So you carry you kiss in place from me. Plan that you've been there and tap the white cross. Now skin blue you broke. Blood blue you capsize. Thank you, Jesus. 
Me play him a must not talk, thank you, and lift him up in name, Lilo de Slamoni. Big play, you tell so you've been making all get a walk, look, is me, Paul Simbari, come close to Lule, Wablo, you. Then now, me play survey through, also me play, come stop close to one time, God, lo walk, Jesus, you make him. Me play at Inu in up. Also, me talk, thank you, Lo, you. Me play some Bible finish. Then now, Bible is stop one time, me play, Papa God, please, you help him, one, one man, Mary. We said he got the Bible finished, land, Lord, please, you help him all strong him all, hope he might help him all, read him and understand him, talk to you. Me play let him come to a nice hand to you. Now, Papa, me play make him sleep in the name of Lord Jesus. Amen. It's not every day that one of the 7,000 languages of the world gets a translation. It's a very special moment in history, so. We just watched God work and overcome one hurdle after another as people prayed, and we just were marveling at God's timing and His hand. We blame God, 10,000 plus population in Zylong, Simbari, language tribe. Thank you, welcome. God telling me, come along, give me a Bible. We love play in Zylong, talk bless, bless, Simbari, talk bless, Bible, we talk welcome, you play. Oh, Talikan Gana. Mana Mana does it tell no quaka Akadin the Ekalaka Koi Tony Pulan the wonderful. There are Tony and Bali and the Tazo. You could just see the excitement rippling through the crowds. They were applauding, just hearing God's word in these books for the first time. That was just so rewarding and exciting to see their enthusiasm when God's word was read. The Bible has a cover that looks very similar to their bark capes. They're actually known for in this area. Everywhere they go, they've got a bark cape on their head. They'll sit on them. They use them for work, for sleep. Every part of their lives has this cape in it. And so the idea was that the Bible is covered by this cape, and in the same way that you guys use the capes for everything in your life, the Bible should cover everything in your life as well. All come up in Bible inside long top place for you, me and You me can read him long top place for you, me. Now, that's the Bible. And I read him light for you, me. In go long heaven. Thank you. This man did something in life for me. Thank you, Pungu. Over a thousand people heard the gospel, uh, not just once, but several times. And we didn't know if people were going to be shy because everyone was watching, but we were just pressed in on by this massive crowd of people right away who were all holding out their hands for Bibles. And we were just wow. overcome with emotion. God had far exceeded our hopes and expectations. Tears of joy from so many in the church for what God did on the day of the Bible dedication. And, and they're also challenged that this isn't the end. This is, this is something that's just starting. The, the word being handed out and being spread in a big way, this is, this is a start of something, not the end of something. I'm just humbled and so grateful to God to see how his people from around the world have come together to make this happen. We have faithful people at home who have supported us for many, many years, sometimes seemingly with very little result. And 
He takes weak vessels, like 2 Corinthians chapter 4 talks about us as being a clay pot that's very weak, but we have an incredible treasure of the gospel. And it's not that the clay pot is something special, it's the treasure that's special, too special to keep to ourselves. And it's on the body of Christ to reach these people, and it can be done. Yes, the Simbari people have received their translation now, but there are still over a thousand unreached people groups who are waiting. If we were to hike down the valley here for a few days, we would end up in another tribal group that doesn't have the Bible in their own language, that doesn't have a gospel witness among them. That's just a shame to the church after 2,000 years since Christ gave the command. And my hope is that the church will rise up to this uh, command of Christ and, and finish this job. These are people who, who have no hope in Christ. And we have this hope and we, we, there's, there's nothing stopping us.